Hello everyone, uh, thanks for the introduction. And just now we're going to go through a methodology I built recently, which is crazy for classing the two three and the number of methods. And I ask you to know why are you taking the in So we know that more than 98% of human genome is non-coding, and this non-coding landscape includes more than 20 or 20 to 40 percent cis regulatory elements. Could be for motors, in answers, anchors of protein interaction, and so on. But the question that exists is that we know that these enhancing promoters, all these kinds of cis regulatory elements are important, but what's the level of importance? So how could we do some kind of feature selection on that? And identify a subset which would be more relevant to the identity fate of cells or other biological, biologically functional uh, important characteristics of cells. So another hypothesis, of, hypothesis was introduced uh, few years ago, which is that clusters of cis regulatory elements, which are groups of cis regulatory elements in proximity of each other, play a more important role in, in determining the fate of cells and their identity. Upon that, super enhancers or cores, two different terminology was introduced for the same thing, and hundreds of papers have used this terminology and the tool that uh, was developed upon that in 2013, and showed that actually the super enhancers or cores that they identified are associated with the identity of cells, are enriched with master transcription factor binding size, are enriched with uh, risk SNPs or SMBs and so on. But if you look at the methodology, the methodology's role or ranking of super enhancers, the methodology has two major steps. First, based on the chipsy profile or chromatin accessibility profile could be DNA's hypersensitivity or ATAC. You identify cis regulatory elements or single peaks. And then throughout the genome, you group the peaks considering a fixed threshold. That's very important. The fixed threshold of 12.5 kV. And then there you could identify signal in this region by mapping the signal intensity from BAM5 or FASC or so on and then sort them to identify this high intensity, high signal intensity enhancers, which they call super enhancers, or we can call it cores in general. But there, there is a major issue in this analysis, not an issue, so something that actually decreases the performance of this methodology. And the important one uh, is this predetermined fixed threshold in calling the groups of peaks or cis regulatory element that we want to consider as cores or super enhancers. So in order to actually come up with a better methodology in this regard, we develop clustering of cis regulatory element or gene genomic region analysis method, in which if we input the actual peak files only, just this is a matter of visualization, this methodology doesn't require BAM or FASTQ files for the signal intensity, it only need the peak files or the bed files of the peaks for that sample. Then it can stratify the sparsely distributed peaks here versus what we call cores. Then we showed that throughout the next slides that these cores are actually functionally more important than the sparsely distributed single cis regulatory elements. So CREAM has four major steps. In the first step, similar to rows, we group the peaks or single cis regulatory elements. We call order as the number of peaks in these clusters. And then for each order, we get the distribution of maximum distance between single peaks within the cluster. And consider threshold, which is an outlier, just first quantile minus 1.5 map of that distribution to come up with the most astringent clusters for that order. And then if you get the difference or somehow derivative of the change in window size versus order, we can see that we have a monotonically increasing, this is derivative. So the, if derivative is positive, it's mon monotonically increasing region, and then it goes through a wavy behavior and becomes negative and so on, which you consider a threshold here for the order. So throughout these three steps, we identify what's the maximum order of peaks are how many peaks we can identify for that single sample, and for each order, what's the threshold for window size for that sample. 
And then we we'll start with the highest order, for example, if you consider the highest order is 11, and we consider a cluster to be core of order 11 and eliminate the lower order overlapping with that region. So going from 11, 10, and so on throughout the core of uh, order 2. So go through some results and see how actually we validated this. So for the first step, we use gm 8 and K562 in ENCODE project because this is these are two cell lines with the maximum number of transcription factors and any epigenomic profiles chipped or any sequencing profile in ENCODE. And here, if you look at just the chrom chromosome distribution, we see that there's a lot of CRE-free gaps in what rows identify as cores. This is what is the gap between the peaks within the cores. And that's exactly because of that fixed threshold for core calling. So, and because of that, CREAM actually come up with the more kind of compact regions. But we have to know if this difference actually functionally is more relevant to the biology of the cells. So if we get the expression of the genes in proximity of CREAM identified cores versus rose identified cores and single cis regulator elements in both cell lines, we can see that the expression of the genes in proximity of CREAM identified cores is significantly higher with respect to both of them and in both cell lines. So, so far so good. We know that the CREAM identified cores are in proximity of highly active genes. Then we looked at the essentiality of the genes. If we get the permutation based enrichment of essential genes within CREAM identified cores, so we call it CREAM genes, and single peak genes or individual CR genes and rows identified core genes, we can see that cream identified genes which are significantly essential, better than null distribution. We expect that the single peaks would be random because actually if you consider the whole space of single cis regulator elements, you cover the whole protein coding landscape. So almost, maybe 87% or something. But rows is actually worse than random, and this is because of the specificity or large regions that it identifies. So it may be for some of the regions close to essential genes, but there's a lot of actually what is not relevant to the fate or biology of cells. And again, doing the similar analysis here, we showed that expression of, this is for K562, just I have to mention, sorry about that. Uh, that Cream genes, which are also essential, so these are essential genes in proximity of cream identified cores, are also ha have also higher expression with respect to single cis regulator element genes and rose genes. So cream identified genes which are highly active, highly essential, and actually there's a lot of commonality between them. So just to showcase some maybe translatable uh, translatable features of this methodology and how we can use it maybe in translation or research. These are s 3 k 7 ac profiles of processed tumor sample which we had in-house in Zupian's lab. And uh, you know that s 3 k 7 ac actually is a profile determining the active region. So these are active cis regulatory elements throughout the genome. So if we use the cores identified by CREEN to cluster the samples, we have only 19 samples, this is not a huge data set. But we can see that we have almost perfect, there is one sample which may be switched in this region. By cream identified cores, while if we use rose identified cores to cluster the sample, there are some misidentification, which showcase that actually cream is also more predictive of identity of cells for even tumor samples, not only cell lines. It shows translatability of the results we are identifying. And then upon that, so we assumed and we showed that cream identifies regions in proximity of highly active, highly active genes, essential genes, and we are assuming that the cores identified by cream are important. So we hypothesized that if we use these regions or these genes as the base for our drug response prediction, and assuming that if we target, if we inhibit these genes which are in proximity of cores, maybe we can inhibit growth of cells. So this was our hypothesis. And we use connectivity mapping database. This database just show us if we have, for example, here, azocytidine. 
For azacytidine, which genes are perturbed or inhibited upon using this drug in this database, which has multiple cancer cell lines? So here, what I show is that just if you're familiar with IC50, lower IC50 or lower log 10 IC50 means that the drug is more effective. So actually, it inhibits more cells in the experiment. So this, these were actually the drugs that Cream predicted to be more effective. And actually, we can see that they are more effective. And this just showcased these drugs that are predicted to be more effective. We have azocytidine, doxorubicin, and those ones. And these are chemotherapies, if you notice, because targeted therapies, we expect that there will not be so many off-target effects. So we cannot use these kind of whole genome level feature selection to identify targeted therapy, maybe agents. And also, we use other cancer cell lines in ENCODE project and showcase that actually in all of those cancer cell lines, we see the same kind of behavior. That cream, if you have drug inhibiting genes in proximity of cream identified cores, those drugs are more effective. So this actually provides us a, an opportunity for new epigenomic features that we can use for pre predicting drug response or even for identifying drugs effective on a new tumor type, not a new tumor type, new cancer cell lines or for other kind of applications in the field of pharmacogenomics in general. So here I show you that Cream identifies cores associated with the identity of the cell line, maybe predictor of drug response and also predictor of essential and active genes. We have applied it for several other examples or just studies to showcase that actually cream identified pores are enriched with massive transcription factor binding sites are associated with topologically associated domains actually showcase that cores are in proximity of chromatin boundaries or edges of chromatin loops if you're familiar with the concept. And also we showcase in other papers, which will come maybe in one or two years, that they are enriched with risk SNPs and predictive of maybe hot spots of mutations in prostate cancer or other tumor types. So the manuscript is available in bioarchive, hopefully we will submit it soon. And also the package, the cream is available as an R package in CRAM, which you can download and install and use it. It's fairly easy, just contact me if there's an issue. Uh, at the end, I wanted to thank Matthew and Benjamin for all the supports, and Arisa for her help in comparison of cream with rose, and Victor for cream or package preparation. Thank you so much for your attention.